Hello, in today's video we will be taking a look at the Philips Hue Outdoor Sensor. What's a Philips Hue Outdoor Sensor? What's an outdoor sensor? What's a sensor? Who am I? I don't know, I can't answer all your questions. But I'll try and answer some of them at least. In this box here we've got a Philips Hue Outdoor Sensor and basically it works with your Philips Hue system to turn on or off lights based on activity that the sensor sees. Now it's designed for mounting outside and it has got an IP54 rating. Don't know what an IP54 rating is? It's right there, not on my penis, on the screen. So you could use it for triggering hue outdoor lights. You could use it for triggering hue indoor lights. You can use it as a sensor that integrates within Home Assistant and it could tell you when someone has passed through the sensor outside. So you could have one of these at the side of your house and get a notification when someone has gone past it. So uh, yeah, it's pretty versatile, but uh, we'll have a little look at it, what's in the box, how you set it up and uh, go from there. Now I'm not gonna show it being installed in this video because I'm moving house and I'm, I can't be bothered to put it on the wall of this house. Um, but I will show you how it works and if you are interested in seeing it installed then let me know in the comments below and I'll film a video when I install it. Let's get in the box. Now this does need a Philips Hue hub to operate from. So uh, if you haven't got one of those, then this won't work. I'm actually doing a video about how to create your own Philips Hue setup, and uh, I'll put a link to it up there when it's ready to go. But yeah, you need the hub to make this work. So it's got some simple steps on the inside of the box. For setup in Philips Hue app, test the sensor, mount the sensor. Well, we can, we can do that. So uh, yeah, let's get in. So. In the box, we have the sensor itself. For comparison, this is my phone. This is the sensor. Kind of shows you how big it is. It is larger than the Hue indoor sensors, but, um, but it's not massive. They only come in one color, which is black. So uh, bear that in mind. And in the box, we've got the mounting bracket and a corner mounting bracket. So you can place this on the corner of the building which is quite cool. And then we have got some screws and uh, some raw plugs to uh, put it onto the wall. And then we've got little leaflets inside. This appears to be some operating instructions and this is all about how you mount it to the wall. So uh, let's have a little look at how you mount it to the wall. Okay, so this gives you sort of a bit of an overview of the different ways of mounting it. You've got option one, mount the sensor on the wall. Option two, mount the sensor on the corner. And three, flexible mounting. Oh, cool. That sort of suggests you use a kind of zip tie to secure it onto a drain pipe or similar. Okay, that's fair enough. So for the standard straight mounting, you just screw that onto the wall and then clip that on. It's pretty simple. Now the advantage of this sensor over a normal PIR sensor is that it's battery powered. So you don't need to run wiring to this and then to a light for it to work. It is battery powered so you should try and mount it somewhere where it's easily accessible so you can change the batteries. Um, so if you don't have a massive ladder all the time don't stick it right at the top of your house because well it'll be a ball lake changing the batteries. You won't have to drill holes through your wall and run cables through to mount this. So in effect, you don't need an electrician to install it. You can install it yourself. Okay, so uh, let's get the light sensor set up and see how it works within the Hue software. Okay, so I've made it so you can see my screen now. Um, so uh, we're in the Hue app and we'll go to settings and then we need to go to accessories because this is an accessory we need to add. So we press on add accessory and it's asking what accessory we want to add. Well, we want to add the Hue outdoor sensor. So, uh, so let's do that. Okay, so it's asking us to remove the wall mount to reveal the setup button. Well, we've got that already. So we can say wall mount removed. And then it says press the setup button. The LED will start blinking after a few seconds. <laughs> it is blinking, so we can say LED is blinking. Excellent. So it's searching for our sensor. Now what I've got here is an outdoor light. 
So uh, we'll pretend that this is my outdoor light in the porch and uh, this is the sensor that's going to control it. There we go, your outdoor sensor is connected, perfect. And uh, my Echo has notified me that there's a new device added to my setup, so that is good. Right, okay, so let's continue. And uh, it's going to be assigned to our pretend porch. So uh, we'll put it in the porch. This part takes a moment or two, I don't know why. There we go, so it says all set. Your outdoor sensor now controls porch with the following default settings. During the day, the light is bright. During the night, the light is dimmed. Hmm. I think we need to change that setting. So this is where we configure how we want our sensor to behave. So the day behavior, which at the moment is set between 8 a.m. and 11 o'clock, the porch light will be in the bright mode. Now you can change it to uh, different scenes. Um, so I want it to do nothing during the day because there's no point in having the light come on when someone walks past because it's bright outside. And then you can choose what happens to the light after a set period of time. So after, in this case, 10 minutes, the light will switch off. Well, we don't need to worry about that because the sensor's not actually doing anything. And now we need to look at the night behavior. Well, we need to change the night behavior to start a little bit earlier because it obviously gets quite dark at the moment. So uh, I'm gonna make the night behavior start at 4 p.m. Yeah, I think, I think I'll make it stick to 8 a.m. So that's set. And what do I want the porch light to do? I want the porch light to be bright at that time. And then after, after 10 minutes, I want the light to turn off. Or you can set it to return to its previous state. So if you've just turned the light on and it's on like a certain mode, um, when it detects motion, it can be like, go to a different mode, i.e. bright in this case, and then you can make it return to the previous state. So you can make it change from a mode that it was in to one that it wasn't, but we're just gonna make the light turn off because after 10 minutes, we want the light to turn off. As well as those settings around time and what modes you want the light to go into, you can also adjust the daylight sensitivity and the motion sensitivity within the app. You don't have to fiddle around with tiny little screws on the unit itself. It's all done within the app. So if you want to change the daylight sensitivity, you can. So it's telling you at the moment, Based on the current measured daylight, or room light, in the room, motion will not trigger the lights. So if you want to make it more sensitive, you can turn it up a bit. And there you go. Based on the current measured daylight, motion will trigger the lights. Or you can put it right down. You can tweak it. So once it's up and installed, you don't need to worry about going up and changing settings. You can do it all from your phone and save the setting. And now you can change the motion sensitivity. So we'll press on that. And it says, if your lights turn on too easily, lower the sensitivity. If your lights do not turn on easily enough, raise the sensitivity. So at the moment it says no motion detected. There you go, motion is detected and the light has switched on. So uh, it really depends on personal preference and uh, where your motion sensor is what these settings should be. So I'd just say, have a little play and uh, see how it works out. So we'll leave it on the medium sensitivity and press save. So there you go, that is it set up. So obviously now you'd need to go and install it on your wall and um, get on with it. That's, that's pretty stri straightforward. Now I guess we should look at how easy it is to change the batteries because that's gonna be something you need to do at some point in the future. So uh, let me get my screwdrivers and we'll crack it open and have a little look. Here we go. Now this will be interesting for me because I don't even know what size battery it takes.
There we go. Little plastic spudger saves the day. And look, there we go. That is how simple it is to get to the battery. And it has got two AA batteries in. Okay. Yeah, and it's got a nice uh, rubber seal around it to keep the elements out. Perfect, and then uh, just do up the screws to reassemble. And just to show you how this appears in Home Assistant, let's uh, have a look at my Home Assistant app. And if we go to configuration and then devices, and where is it? We've got an outside, there you go, Hue Outdoor Motion Sensor 1, and we can have a little look at it. And so, uh, it's actually got a light sensor in it, a temperature sensor, and the motion sensor as well. So uh, if I just move my hand over it, see, it detects motion. And so you could set up little automations or scenes that happen when there's motion detected, or it hits a certain temperature, or a certain light level is reached. So you can do a lot of stuff within Home Assistant with these sensors. You could set it up so you get a notification when there's motion on the motion sensor. It doesn't necessarily have to turn on a light. You can use automations and things like that to make it do something else. So there's a lot of fiddling that can be done with the Philips Hue sensors. Perfect. Well, that is a quick look at the Philips Hue outdoor sensor. Hopefully that should answer all your questions and queries. But if it doesn't, then please do drop a comment below and I'll do my very best to help out. I think that's all from me, so uh, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel, it helps the channel grow and it means the world to me. And also, if the video has been helpful in any way, give it a thumbs up. Uh, that's it, so uh, for now, it's game over.